<laughs> well, uh, what lovely people you play in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> When you play like really nice characters, uh, so good people with good intentions and nice hearts, do those traits like, or can their outlook on life ever rub off on you guys as, as people? Or, I guess it works on both sides. Any character traits really for that matter, good or bad. Do you ever find that you can ever adopt them as, as real life people? That's really sweet. Good- I, mean, I guess I didn't think about it much, but maybe that's why it was such a lovely set and such a like really nice work experience. And I think maybe it was because we were all just playing quite nice people that, you know, wanted to do nice Christmassy things. And I think that definitely rubbed off. Mm. Yeah. Maybe Alfie's like not a nice guy at all. He was just really nice during this job because of Adam. <laughs> it was all Adam. It was all Adam. I'm yeah. horrendous. No, it's, it's, I think it also, it creates an atmosphere, doesn't it? It helps create an atmosphere when you're, when, in the same way that the kind of atmosphere of what you're doing, if you're doing something really heavy, can, you, you have to kind of, you have to find a, a, a balance. So the whole, you know, when you're shooting something that's really like, <clears throat> so everything is not in that kind of weightiness. You need to, you need to sort of break that a bit. It's kind of the opposite, m- making <laughs> this is Christmas because it's so wonderful. It just kind of spills over and you go, let's keep this sort of like... <laughs> Christmassy glow. This is just brilliant. Everyone's just sitting around, chatting, smiling at each other, being considerate. I mean, it was, it was. I think it is kind of inevitable that there's a bit of a, that there's a bit of a bleed, especially when it's, especially when the world of the film is such an enjoyable world to be in. Yeah. Right? yeah. Then you go, ah, oh. mm. you know, you don't want to shake. Did. It. <laughs> you go, oh. <laughs> Wasn't that nice? That was nice, wasn't it? And then just sort of sit around as the, as you know, we moved to locations in that in that in that warm, happy glow. I'm sure what helps as well, because I I, is, I hosted this Q and A a few years back, and it was for a Chris Foggin movie. Um, and so after introing it during the actual screening, we kind of went off, had a drink, and then waited for the film to finish before heading back out. And he was so bloody lovely, that man. I'm it, sure he put, the nicest. Like it's yeah. It is shocking. He puts the Chris in Christmas, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And I know, <laughs> I know there's, I know there's something to be said for like true sort of masters of their craft, the kind of troubled souls that go out and create art that are probably difficult people to collaborate with. But sometimes, how nice is it to work with someone who's just really, really lovely, like Chris? I don't, I mean, know, I don't know if there is something to be said for that. You know, no. I'm yes. like, it, it's, it's, it's about, it's about the work right it, it's like we i think we like to fetishize the idea mm. of the tortured artist mm. who is this great mind and this blur and you know that that that's not to say that mm. figures like that that have kind of contributed to that being in our popular imaginations haven't had their own mm. problems their own mm. sufferings and that's to, to, not to delegitimize that but i think when that becomes something that's fetishized which i think it is right yeah. we think oh that person looks really tortured therefore that work is really good you know it, that's that's not everyone's <laughs> everyone's got their own journey. you can be a lovely person and make a really good film <laughs> do you know what i mean you can be chris Foggin. that's that's yeah. totally legit and cool and actually probably creates a better, especially with something collaborative, mm. a better environment for people to work in. Do you know what I mean? Filmmaking is a hugely collaborative endeavor. You've mm. got people working in all sorts of different disciplines across a huge number of departments, trying to create this one thing that this whole that we offer up to an audience to enjoy. So if mm. someone's, you know, uh, leading the, the captain of the ship is essentially being a dick all the time because he's so tortured it's like that doesn't ha- that just blocks people yeah. do you know what i mean that gets in the way and of i think you're right i mean it, it takes away from all the people that are the exception that prove that that's wrong i mean chris is that the difference in my work i could tell just being on a set that felt safe um mm. that felt secure that was positive that was collaborative makes you do better work because it, it's a better work environment and i mean i couldn't agree with alfie more i'm so over the tortured artist narrative i really couldn't give a shit about him anymore like genuinely let's all just be nice let's have we're really mm. lucky to do a job that we love we get you know we, we get to be creative um i think it should now be the bare minimum that you mm. should be a kind useful helpful person on set mm-hmm. no matter what department and i and i think um yeah, just seeing firsthand what a difference it makes. I mean, to all the crew, the crew knew that Chris was 
um, intelligent, knew what he wanted, but also kind and generous. And that made everyone excited to do their best work possible. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, if you've had a drink with him, then you know, he genuinely yeah. is just amazing. Yeah. Team Chris. Um, but I really, as much as I really did enjoy the film, I can't lie to you both. If a guy stood up on the train inv and invited me to a party, I don't think I'd go. And even after watching everyone down the end of the carriage become mates, I still don't know if I'd go. But I'm, I know, I'm, I know, I just, there's something about train communications. I just <laughs> can't, I'm not sure. What it is. But this film might have changed my mind in that regard. I'm not sure. But I plug in, I, 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 I plug in and listen to music. And yesterday was obviously... I think it was like Spotify Wrapped Day, where everyone was talking about the most listened mm. artists, most listened to artists of the year. What do you, what do you guys listen to on trains? What what would you say your most listened to artist of the year is? If you don't use Spotify and don't actually have it certified, uh, so <laughs> fun. Go on. No, I was just going to say. Do you remember we had this we had this conversation where we were shooting about, <laughs> about like oh, when you go home at the end of the day, do you put your headphones on? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, you know, long yeah. Mm -hmm. and just. Just to say something, I'm the I, I would go to the party probably. Yeah. You know? I'm like, and I actually go home at the end of the day and don't put my headphones on. I actually I I, I actually don't like doing it. I would mm. actually I d I don't like closing myself off, but mm. I have listened to lots of music this year. So I'll get to that, but I'll let Kyle go first. But it was just funny because it was <laughs> like, yeah, no, I wouldn't go to the party either because I made that many that mistake many times in my youth. So uh, I know better than to follow anyone to a party on public transport. Um, but no, I've gotten really into podcasts. That that's my thing now. Um, I find it really like soothes my brain. So I listen to. I don't like the true crime things. I find that too much. Um, but no, investigative journalism is what I'm really into. Nice highbrow. Right. Beyonce. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, maybe if someone, yeah, Alfie, if you went, if you said you were going to go to the oh. party and I saw you, maybe I go, oh, go on then, I might, I'll give it a go. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I like this idea. I mean, the characters are talking about it in the in the film of creating lives and worlds for people that you kind of see on the train. But I was wondering, as two famous actors, very much in the public eye, do you ever feel like you lose a little bit of that sense of mystery and anonymity by not always being a stranger to people? I mean, you are officially a stranger, but people recognise you. They feel like they they know who you are. Yeah, yeah that's why you have little disguises. I, I kind of, when I'm not working, I've no makeup on, hair up, glasses on, and people are terrified of me because I just look exhausted and and like a you know a mum of two trying to get to the school on time. Um, so I feel like I do still have my little Clark Kent disguise in life. Um, but yeah, you do lose a, a sense of that and a sense of mystery. But then it's what's really exciting is that when you do meet people and then you get to kind of talk to them a bit further than the selfie, and you start to see them realize that you are a person and, and you kind of can have a cool conversation with them and learn something about them. And um, I always like seeing that switch where they kind of stop looking at you as just who they think you are and go, oh, okay, that oh, you, I can talk to you about other stuff. Mm. Um, and I always find that quite exciting. You're um, very good at it. Alfie chats yeah, to everyone. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know about good at it. I, I, I do like chatting to people and chatting to strangers. I think, but that is, that, it's funny you say that because it is one of the things that I find a bit, you know, look, we're, we're, it, it's a privilege to be able to tell stories for a living. And even more so if you get to tell stories that reach a lot of people, right? So, you know, that's kind of always like, if someone sort of comes and says hi on the street or whatever, I'm like, how lucky am I that I got to do something? <laughs> like anyone, you know, I met a friend the other day who I did a play with and she reminded me, you remember that show where we had more people, there were more people doing the play than in the audience. It was a show on pub feeds. It was a one-man show. It was <laughs> it, you are, no, yeah. It was, goodness, imagine. Um, though we did, actually. I think we had shows that we cancelled because we didn't have anyone. But uh, this particular show, mm. we had three people in the audience. There were three in the cast and a stage manager. So I was like, there's more of us than there was of them. So I try and remember that every time, <laughs> every time someone comes up when I've like dropped something or I've got a mouthful of food or whatever. But I mean, the strange thing is it does kind of, the nice thing is it brings you into contact with people. I suppose the flip side of that is I'm that weird person who comes into contact with people anyone, anyway. Do you know what I mean? If someone's like on the tube, I might talk to them or, I, you know, I'll, I'll talk to strangers. And so I sit there on the tube looking at people 
the, the kind of problem is every now and then it's going to be the headline and you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, looks at strangers on <laughs> Sounds weird, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's just, but then when people look at you, when people then look at me and go, oh, I got, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I wouldn't, it, it just creates a different dynamic to that interaction, which is, which is fine. But sometimes it's nice, as you say, to go in as a stranger and just mm. talk to someone on that basis. And, and, and but you know, mm. variety is the spice of life. Brilliant. No. Well, I started off the interview by saying that you're both, your characters are bloody lovely. And I think you're both seem very similar to your characters. So yeah. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much for your time today. Have a nice Christmas. And uh, we might, I'm sure we'll catch you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye, Bless. Thank you, Stephanie. Take care. Bye -bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.